Okay, so last video, we ended with psi, omega to the omega, as equal to gamma naught. Now, I want to ask the question, how would we get to something like gamma 1? Well, this isn't entirely clear, so um, let's take small steps. Let's just go to the next psi number. Let's go psi omega to the omega plus 1. So here, we would take the previous one, pop it into a set, and ask what's the first inaccessible point. Well, that, of course, would just be an infinite tower of gamma naughts. And we learned in a previous video that if the ordinal is as big or bigger than zeta naught, an infinite tower of it is simply equaled, equal to epsilon of that ordinal plus 1. So in this case, the first epsilon number after gamma naught. So let's imagine for a second now that we're not allowed to pop any more omegas into here. How far can we get with this? Well, any ordinal that we can create, we can pop back into here to create larger ordinals. Let's do that. Let's say we have psi now of omega to the omega plus our new ordinal that we created, epsilon gamma naught plus 1. So we can create things like uh, epsilon epsilon gamma naught plus 1. You can pop that and get epsilon 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 gamma naught plus 1, blah, 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 blah. And as we find, we can get arbitrary nestings of epsilons with our... Uh, gamma naught plus 1. And the limit of that we can think of as the first zeta number after gamma naught. But then we get stuck again, which seems a little strange because we're now able to access ordinals like this, but we still get stuck at zeta, which is what happened when we first introduced infinite collapsing ordinals. So this is a kind of uh, interesting property in that we can kind of gauge where we are by understanding that we get stuck in all the same places as we did before. The only difference is now we have gamma naught that we could include in here. So instead of getting stuck at zeta naught now, we're getting stuck at zeta gamma naught plus one. So continuing on like this, let's now plug in a capital omega so we can get out of this trap here. We can uh, unstick the function again. So we have omega to the omega plus omega as equal to zeta gamma naught plus one. And then we can uh, say in general that omega to the omega plus omega times a would be the eighth zeta number after gamma naught. So we have kind of like a zeta building function that includes our gamma naught here. And the limit of this, of course, would be an infinite nesting of zetas with gamma naught plus one at the bottom which is simply equal to the first eta number after gamma naught. So if we plug another omega in here, which would truncate to omega squared, we get omega to the omega plus omega squared is equal to the first eta number after gamma naught. And we can go further. We can see this as uh, an eta building function, and we can move on to the next one, and we could even replace this with a, kind of like we did before. And then we can see that this is the a plus 1 phi function after gamma naught. So we're taking all of these, um, these ordinals that we constructed before, all of these points where it got stuck, they're going to get stuck in the exact same spot, only difference is we have a factor of uh, gamma naught that we can build with as well. So we're kind of using that to our advantage. We're using previous knowledge to build these new ordinals. And we can uh, still go further. So let's say um, this now is kind of like a phi building function that includes gamma naught. So what is the supremum of this? What is the limit of, um, of this where this function now is going to get stuck here? Well, it's going to be an infinite nesting of phi's, but this time with gamma naught plus 1 at the bottom, which is equivalent to gamma 1. And we write that now as omega to the omega plus omega to the omega which simply truncates to omega to the omega times two, and that equals our gamma one. And we can still go further. We can actually say in general that psi omega to the omega times a is gonna be gamma a minus one. So now we can see this as kind of a gamma building function, and we can ask what the supremum of that would be, which is clearly just an infinite nesting of gammas now. And we can write that as psi omega to the omega times omega, and we can actually rewrite that using rules of exponents as omega to the omega 
plus one. And um, we denoted this, I think, before as something like alpha naught or whatever, but that's kind of just by made up, made up term for it. So let's use the more standard um, extended Weber notation. So if you remember, uh, gamma naught in extended Weber notation was equal to uh, phi one comma zero comma zero, something like gamma one was equal to phi one zero one. And uh, the infinite nesting here would be um, where we enumerate this second value here, the, the supremum of the gammas. So we have the infinite nesting of gammas as equal to phi one one zero. So let's write that in. Phi one one zero in extended Weber notation. So if we keep on going like this or whatever, if we pop another omega in here, this would be the, the supremum of this. So you can imagine an equation uh, that satisfies this here. Basically, we end up enumerating the next value over here and end up getting phi two zero zero. So this happens when we pop another omega in here. So this happens when we have omega to the omega plus omega, which is simply psi omega to the omega times two. And that's going to equal our uh, phi two zero zero. And then we can find the supremum of this. So if we pop another omega in here now, it's going to be the supremum of this function that satisfies the equation phi a zero zero is equal to a, which is simply uh, we add another term to this and end up with a four argument Veblen function. So phi one zero zero zero. So we have psi omega to the omega times omega, which truncates to psi omega omega to the two, and that's going to equal phi one zero zero zero. And this is also called the Ackerman ordinal, just um, a little bit of trivia there. And we could even say in general that psi omega to the omega to the a is equal to an extended Veblen uh, function with a plus one, or sorry, a plus two arguments in it. And just for fun, why not? Let's just plug in uh, an infinite ordinal in here. So we'll have psi omega to the omega to the small omega now. And this is equal to a Veblen function with an infinite number of arguments in here. And we alluded to this before. This is something called uh, the small Veblen ordinal. And it's only called uh, small uh, because when, when compared to something called the large Veblen ordinal, which I'll show you just now, actually. So what about the supremum of this? That happens when we plug in another omega into this slot here. So we have psi omega to the omega to the omega. And this is something called uh, the large Veblen ordinal. And it's basically just the supremum of all of extended Veblen notation. So this is kind of a little bit hard to visualize because what's the supremum? I mean, this is already an infinite number. So isn't this as far as we can go? Well, the answer is no. And the way I like to think about it is, um, you can imagine uh, having gamma. We can pop in an infinity underneath here, but this isn't the supremum of the gammas. The supremum is an infinite nesting of gammas. So in the same kind of way, an infinite number of terms in the Veblen functions isn't the supremum of the whole thing. We have to go into like an infinite nesting of this, which would be very, very hard to to write down. I don't know if I could find a way of intuitively writing this down nested to show you what the supremum is. It's much, much easier with something like this, but just keep this in mind. It's a difference between this would be equivalent to the small Veblen ordinal and this would be equivalent to the large Veblen ordinal. So this is just, I'll just write this down. Supremum of Veblen notation. So basically we've surpassed our uh, most powerful tool with constructing ordinals. And uh, really, there's no reason to stop there even. We can just uh, pop another omega on the top of this one. And who knows what that equals? It's something uh, beyond uh, Weber notation, clearly. And uh, because we're allowed to construct finite constructions of any of the things that were in, in S, so let's just uh, reiterate, we have S is equal to 0, 1, omega, and capital omega. As long as it's not an infinite... Um, 
tower, we're allowed to do it. So we can put in an arbitrary number of omegas in here. And in fact, the only time where this um, really craps out is uh, when we try to put in an infinite tower of this, because that once again is prohibited with our basic rules of infinite, infinite collapsing ordinals. And this happens at uh, psi epsilon omega plus one because of that same reason that an infinite tower of omegas is uh, arithmetically equivalent to this because it's obviously larger than zeta naught. So this is where the function um, gets stuck permanently because now there's nothing to bail us out. We can't add another uh, capital omega here to bail us out like we've been able to do the whole time uh, before. And this is something called the bachmann howard ordinal. Now we can get past this, but um, I'm gonna save that for the next video.